welcome to the first Exposed Negative of 2024. We talk about our New Year's resolutions, our plans for the year. We talk about work-life balance, how, how we kind of deal with time management. Plus, we've got a competition for every listener. So please open your Retouch software, grab yourself a drink. Let's get comfortable and hope you enjoy it. <laughs> that, that was literally the worst timing ever. <laughs> Oh, well, um, you know, good start to 2024 there, Tom. Isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Ooh. Right. How are you, Greg? Better than uh, me. Yeah. Yeah, by the looks of it. I was, yeah. I was kind of expecting your voice to go up when you did that, like you were on helium. Hello, mate. Nice to see you. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I should probably explain. I am at the tail end of a quite severely asthmatic um, chest infection, which has been great because obviously that's what you want at uh, Christmas and having a new baby is for then you to be deathly ill in bed. Um, <laughs> so it's been a very, very interesting time with me. How was everything with you? Uh, it's all been, yeah, I had a nice nice break over Christmas and then kind of back into the fray slowly. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Jan, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's it's funny, isn't it? Like, I, I, I historically... I don't think I've ever been busy in January. And I used to get really worried about it. I'd be like, oh my God, I haven't got any work. What's going on? And then I'd be like, oh, it's just January. Yeah. Well, like you used January to go away and... quite regularly in January, didn't you? And I think yeah, it's quite I... a sensible First time. two weeks. First two mm. weeks in Jan, I would just leave the country. With my family, obviously. I wouldn't just I wouldn't just up and go. But it would be, it's quite a good time to, to go away, turns yeah. out. Yes, you come back to that open your email inbox and you just look at all of the emails and just go delete <laughs> I don't know freelance freelance life can we actually do that I'd love I'd, don't get me wrong I would love to I get but... so I get so I mean you'd hate my inbox I know you've seen it before and you've gone <sighs> Whoa. my when I saw your inbox I felt my heart genuinely <laughs> skip a beat it really it really just went and I was like oh right okay okay right interesting and you were like have you heard of inbox zero I was like, what's that? But for the record, I am still maintaining an inbox zero and have done for now eight or nine years. Not to not to brag, obviously. For anyone who's not au fait with what inbox zero is, it basically means keeping a completely clear inbox and filing every email mm. and replying to everything and basically just being ultra militant with your emails, mm. uh, which is sort of kind of how you run yours, isn't it? Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just ultra militant is in the way that I'm just absolutely not going to file any of my emails. <laughs> They're all in there somewhere. <laughs> They're all in. Well, do you, do you use Gmail? I do, yeah. So, so I, do search... have, I do have certain filters set up for filing stuff, but I, I, I probably could do with putting a day aside and just going in and just culling and um and setting it up but the thing is with it oh, i just i'm just not the type of person that would ever stay on top of inbox zero it's fair just, enough just not my not my bag i just, I just um, felt for me I, did, I started doing it almost 10 years ago and i kind of about 10 years ago started going <coughs> <coughs> oh dear sorry hang on <coughs> there's going to be a fair bit of this apologies some wonders for your health it has, hasn't it? Inbox, <laughs> Inbox Zero has has really helped. Has really helped. Though it's um, it, it started about ten years ago when I was starting to go through and I was trying to find you know all those kind of tips and tricks to help you kind of maximise your productivity and all that kind of stuff. Actually, Inbox Zero is one of the only ones that I've actually managed to keep going, and I mm. I love it. There's nothing quite like you know. Once just, you get on top of it, you know it's it's not so difficult to maintain. I think no, it's but like I you, once you the, haven't done it for ages, you're like, nah. there are there are the occasional days, three or four kind of like if if it doesn't go kind of filed for like three or four days, and yeah. suddenly you can end up with like two hundred emails, and then you suddenly yeah. go, oh, how committed to inbox zero am I? Do I mm. need to do it? And then obviously you go, yeah, you you do. But gmail's been but gmail's been amazing for it actually weirdly i moved everything over to gmail years uh about six to eight months ago and okay. now using do you use the keyboard shortcuts in no gmail? you've tried to get me onto it holy moly man like there it is when you can keyboard shortcut your way around gmail you can just blitz stuff it's mm. so quick so quick um and the you know v 
is amazing because V will move anything with a tag. So a little thing comes up and you type in, I don't know, receipts or rec, and it goes, do you mean receipts? And you go, yeah, boom, straight off, gone. Mm. And it's like, it's little things like that, which, you know, will it might be very helpful for people in the new year because let's yeah. talk about this. It's 2024, right? Big year. Big year. I think it's going to be a, uh, with the nicest way of saying it, I think it'll be kind of a make or break year for quite a few people. I feel that kind of after 2023 being the year it was mm -hmm. and uh, the way kind of things maybe are going, um, that I think we kind of might see not a shrinking, but I do kind of get the feeling that there might be people who just get kind of not, not fed up with photography, but basically find it too hard to make it. Work. Or maybe they just kind of yeah. feel like the, the, the effort they put in just isn't worth the kind of the pay the payback right so it's going to be a really interesting year to see kind of what's what's going on i mean what how do you feel about it mm, well you know me i try not to overthink things in general <laughs> cards cards close to your chest i knew no, it. no i just don't i don't really um yeah i've not really given it huge amounts of thought i've just kind of i tend to focus more on the kind of next next few months rather than kind of long-term thinking and i know it's probably better to have some long-term thinking uh on these things to be able to kind of strategize about where you want to be heading but yeah to be honest i just you know <laughs> we'll see what happens yeah i mean here's the thing right i'm i'm with you so normally you know me bit of a planner bit of a you know i love doing a gantt chart i love kind of like doing all these all these things i've got a mind node that i've done for 2024 but normally at the start of the year i'm like woo yeah let's go like what's going on new year this year i'm like okay it's 2024 <clears throat> what what Let's am I going to be? It. Yeah, kind, <laughs> kind of. So so uh, end of last year, I got chatting to someone who is in commercial property, mm -hmm. right? Known them a long time. And he'd come back from a, um, what are they called? Like a, not like a convention, sort of like a convention. He'd come mm. back from this convention was just like, so the saying in property is apparently going to be survive till 25. And I was <laughs> like, oh, right, cool. Great. So I think that basically started my head going, oh, you know, 24 is not going to be any good. Actually, I reckon 24 will be a good year. I mm. think everything will start to pick back up after 23, where I think actually 23 economically was a tricky year because of, I think of consumer confidence and maybe business confidence. I think mm. in 24, I think hopefully that should hopefully level out and start to kind of pick back up again. And there should hopefully be well, more there's a money couple being of things. released. A couple of things I think that are kind of going to be quite important. In the UK specifically, obviously we've got a general election this year. Mm -hmm. I think that will come in the probably last quarter or the second to last quarter. And yeah. I think it will um, change the markets generally because if it goes the way it's predicted to go, that might kind of lead people to have certain levels more confidence perhaps that mm -hmm. might positively affect things. Um I think generally in the UK, there's a crying out for change in, you know, in some form anyway. And I think any change like that is going to help bolster things. Um, but then to counter that, you know, with everything that's going on in the Middle East, um, with everything that's going on at the moment with the shipping lanes in the Red Sea with the Houthi rebels, that's going to have a knock on effect to um, logistics and also trade and you know that that obviously has loads of knock-on effects but there's already starting to be problems with supply chains because of that and if that gets worse then you know that's going to be similar to when the uh, russia ukraine war broke out and there was kind of the similar kind of unsteady period for logistics and supply chains then mm -hmm. so i think that's not great um in terms of the effect that's going to have on every industry but um you know yin and yang these things balance out sometimes they so we'll i mean see. i'm sure they i'm sure they do we did we did think we were going to try and keep this one light 
didn't we? <laughs> it's so already gone down, it's yeah. already gone down. No, but I, I um, having said that I kind of was a bit like ambivalent about 2024, I do feel actually like it's going to be a good year. Mm. I do, I do. It's just, I, I don't have, I mean, maybe it's old, me, me, me getting older, or maybe it's just the fact that I had a child just before Christmas and I've barely slept, as you can see with these uncontrollable mm. eye bags. Apologies for everyone watching on YouTube. Um, but it is kind of like, I don't know, I'm kind of like, I'm wary. Mm. Is that, is that like a good way of putting it? I don't know. I'm like, I'm excited, but yet I'm being a realist about it. Because yeah. at, at this point in the year, historically, normally I've bought four lenses. Uh, you know, it's the 8th of Jan, so maybe I would have even bought five. So, and and let's, well, let's you're, talk... You're not allowed. I'm not allowed, because where are we at? We are recording this on the 8th of Jan, and I am currently 57 days left. Yeah. So almost at the halfway point, and yeah. haven't bought anything. Bought these. I was going to say, tell me about those new headphones, Tom. But I, I thought I'd get in there. Uh, my other <laughs> ones, my other ones broke. So I, I believe you threw them down the stairs. <laughs> a very, very high set of stairs. No, uh, they, they really did break. So, <clears throat> so far, it was unfortunate that they were like just laying there behind the back wheel of the car when you reverse out the drive, didn't they? <laughs> to, to be honest, I, I, I was, I was annoyed that my uh, neighbour hadn't taken the instructions to put them just under. Um, but no, it was a shame because they were actually a very good set of headphones. And these yeah. are fine. These are fine. <laughs> they're fine. Um, these have actually got to go back because they're already broken. So I've had them eight hours. That's gone. That's gone really well. <laughs> um, but I've gone with industry standard for podcasters. Okay. Apparently, I don't know what that means. So, um, but yeah, no. So the I'm 57 days left. So we're what? I'm 43 days in. What's really interesting is if you are thinking or going on Google and researching gear and stuff like that, put yourself... So someone told me about a 10-day rule. So if you really want... If you're going to buy something, don't buy it. Or I think the rule was for every £10 it costs up to 10 days, spend that amount of days waiting for it. So if it's £20, spend two days. If it's £30, spend three days waiting for it. If it's 60 they're obviously six days, up to 10 days. And actually, if you still want it at the end of the 10 days, you probably do want it. Mm. But I started doing that, and I was just like, okay, well, I'll put that thing in my car, and I'll come back to it. I'll set a timer for 10 days or whatever. And I came back to it, I was like, nah, I'm all, I'm all right, actually. Mm. Don't, need, don't, don't, really, don't really want it. Well, you never wanted it in the first place. You're just trying to get that hit of dopamine. Yeah. Um, and what's yeah, interesting? Wish, wish lists are good for that, or Pinterest and things yeah. like that, where you can kind of save stuff and you kind of know it's there, and you actually stop wanting the item after a while, and you're like, well, actually, now you know, how many days later, I've looked into a bit more, and I just don't think actually it's worthwhile. No, but it's, it's really that, it's when you get stuck in that cycle of then looking at reviews and blah blah blah. That's when it gets out of hand. It's so easy, though. It's so yeah. easy as photographers to do that, especially considering we, like, all affectionately talk about gas, right? Mm. We all talk about it like it's just a normal thing. Well, actually, I think a lot of people shouldn't be spending three and a half grand on that lens or, you know, four grand on that body or, you know, 500 quid here or 600 quid because they're not small amounts of money. Mm. If If... It was like a doll's house. Actually, that's a terrible example. I know how much some of the expensive doll's house goes for. But like, if it was something kind of like a remote control car, again, that's not a very good example because I know they can get expensive. Mm. But like, if it's a cheap hobby with like little bits here and there, well, I sort of think that maybe you could probably allow yourself to buy a wishbone for like eight quid or something like that. But in photography, you know, there's the, there's a video that went viral over Christmas of a, an American photographer or a videographer sitting his wife down and showing her the equipment and getting her to guess the prices. And she was like, I don't know, $100? $100? And he was like, no, $4,500. Mm. And you kind of go, well, actually, yeah, what we have to buy is crazy money, really, yeah. as far as like the grand the grand scheme of like, if you look at the national living wage, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I think is at 27 or 28,000. I'm not I don't entirely know, but I think it's around the tw the, the high 20s for the average uh, UK wage. And then you kind of go, well that's that's hard, you know, probably most people's camera bags. 
you yeah. know, two bodies, three lenses, and then triggers, maybe a flash in there, and memory cards. Boom, you could be quite quite easily. Add up. Yeah. Oh, you could definitely get kind of like north of twenty grand very very easily. Mm. So it's um, you know, it's it's a really interesting thing, and I think maybe actually as photographers, we're gonna start talking about gear less i would really like that now because my my attitude having done this challenge my attitude towards gear has completely changed mm. like it's it's great like now i'm 43 days in and i'm like okay i'm going to reach out to my my local makeup artist and i'm going to book in you know i'm going to hire her instead of buying some kit and we're going to do some cool personal work in the in the village hall down by me Mm. I'm like, well, that's a great way to think about it. Way more productive to be doing that than buying something. You know, I, if this had been me six months ago, I'd be like, oh, I really like the look of that RF13518. Yeah. Well, you can w hire it for a week for 140 quid. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that and I'll put it on I the job. I think in general with photography gear, it's always wise to hire stuff first anyway and just see if you actually get on with it rather than jumping in and buying stuff. Um, if you can and there's like you know there are companies as well that you know offer i know that fuji do um a system where they actually allow people you know a certain uh, um amount that can be rented for free before you actually start paying mm -hmm. um through certain companies so it's it's definitely worth looking into and researching and, and taking that option rather than just jumping in and buying stuff um i wish as, i i wish i'd done that I wish I'd actually just gone, okay, well, look, that's going to be 100 quid for me to hire it for five days or whatever. I'll test it as opposed to going in. Because I, I used to go and test stuff, but I'd made my mind up. I'd like go down to my local camera shop and I'd be like, have you got that lens I ordered in? I want to test it. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah you, never, you never need to test it on the, on the shop floor. No, there's absolutely no, not. There's no, it takes a lot. It takes something major to be up with it for you to walk away having not then bought it. That's the trouble. Like the Plus peer also, pressure, the salespeople, like they all know that you're. Oh, in also, the game, I'm but... so desperate to impress them. That's the that's the trouble. <laughs> like I, I'm like I'm like the um, London Camera Exchange in Guildford. I I think I still have the record for like the biggest, like purchase all in one and a year total, and I'm like well, that that kind of isn't that cool, like. <laughs> It's not really like a cool moniker because also when I kind of go in there, they're like, "Oh yeah, what are you after?" And yeah. I'm like, "Oh rubbish." They just, like see, it's, they just see dollar signs. That's the trouble. <laughs> their their door opens, and for everyone else it goes ting a ling a ling, and then for me it just goes ka ching, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh god damn it." <laughs> So, but I, but I honestly, it's it's really interesting. I'm 43 days in. I'm looking at everything in a completely different light. I'm looking at shooting loads of personal work now instead of um, kind of worrying about what lens that I should buy that is going to sit unused in my kit bag. I've gone mm -hmm. through all my kit. I've gone through all the bags, and there's another load of stuff to go on eBay. And actually, it's so therapeutic and cathartic to go through and be like, I've not used that in forever. I've not used this. Do I actually think I'm going to use that? No. Well, get rid of it. And also, it turns out having less kit means less kind of like um, less dragging hundreds of cases around to shoots where you might end up using one light. Now, I went through a phase of like bringing out 13 or something like flight cases. Mm. And I'd, I'd get my camera bag and a stand and like one or maybe two lights max. And mm. I'd have all this stuff, and I'd be like, my back, my poor back. Like, it's getting absolutely destroyed. So um, it's nice now to not have that focus. I, I would really wholeheartedly recommend doing a 100-day year, year, gear challenge. 100 year? I, uh, that's quite a lifetime commitment. Though. It is. A, that's, a big old, that's a big old commitment. But the um, it's really feels good good really feels good plus also the bank balance that's great <laughs> so that hasn't gone down yeah that's the wild thing for me like I, I i put a message up in the group didn't i the other week monzo are now doing the spotify kind of wrapped type vibes mm. and i keep getting notifications and i got a notification um i think i was like what, three weeks in maybe three and a half weeks into the challenge Mm. And they're like, you've spent 48% less yeah. this month. And I was like, that I got that message three days after the, the start of the month. And I was like, oh, 
Right. <laughs> yes. That is actually quite a big, quite a big saving. Yeah. And, um, I, you, yeah, I think a lot of people will notice that this this time of year as well, like in January, because I've been having them on my personal account, and of course it's because Christmas is such an expensive month. So it's one good thing in January is you're like, oh, I'm actually spending less this month, and then you go, oh yeah, it's because I'm not having to buy presents for everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, that's my that's my my Christmas joy now. I'm I'm now like thanking God for um, Black Friday, right? Because my my children are born in the week before Christmas, both of them. Yeah. So it's like, wow, that's expensive. And then we've got my mother's birthday and my wife's mother's birthday as well, all in eight days of each other. So, Friday. yeah, thoughts and prayers, please, my friend. <laughs> thoughts and prayers. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, in the in the um, uh, vein of kind of new beginnings and, and new years and what have you, um, we've got something exciting that we wanted to announce, didn't we, for our listeners? Um we are going to be running a competition. Y- there we go. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we're, we're, no, no, we're, we're very excited to be doing it. I'm going to tell it. you it's... what it's about or what it's... <laughs> no, it's that's it. That's all the details you're getting, guys. Tune Brilliant. in next week. Um, no, so we are... Well, I was... I was, I was yeah, you take it away because you're, you're kind of the one who's organised this, so... Well, so we are driving people over to our YouTube channel. Right, this is not. This is won't be news to people who've listened to the show already. Um, but Capture One have very, very generously donated to the show six six month licenses for the top level of Capture One. So that is their all inclusive. So you get loads of styles. You get loads of. You get the the full Capture One Pro for six months. Uh, you get Capture One Live included, up to a. I can't remember how many you get on the normal. I think I think it's just unlimited number of sessions. Um, and yeah, they've basically been really generous and just given us six uh, key codes to um, to to give out to wonderful people. Now, the way we are going to do this is going to be driving people over to our YouTube channel. So what we would like you to do is I'd like you to go over to YouTube, find us, which is at Exposed Negative. Subscri- hit that subscribe button, guys, or however they say it in all the videos. Ka-ching, and then all the bell and whatnot. Um, and then leave us a comment saying, uh, basically, give us a really, why don't we just do, give us a funny reason why you would love a Capture One uh, key code, right? So just leave a comment on the latest episode. And we're going to be running this for the next six weeks. So every week we're going to be giving away, or the next six episodes, we're going to be giving away a key code per episode. And um, yeah, it's basically a little competition between us and Capture One. Uh, obviously, it would be fantastic if you could go to Capture One on uh, YouTube as well and give them a, a, a like, but really come to our channel and sub- subscribe there. Um, but huge shout out to the guys at Capture One for being so generous and giving us the key codes. Yeah. And I mean, obviously because we are going to be running it uh, six times um, and we will be drawing the winners from um, subscribers on our YouTube channel. If you're already a subscriber, then happy days because you have got six chances to win. Um, If you're not a subscriber yet, obviously it pays for you to go over sooner rather than later and subscribe Mm -hmm. because you'll still have chances. Every time we draw a name from the hat, you will be in the running for it so um obviously we'll be talking about this on future episodes and we will start to um announce winners after not on the next episode but the episode after that we will start to announce our um, winners or at least our first winner Mm. um so yeah if if you if you want to be in it if you want to win it you've got to be in it you've got to be you've got to be in it to win it right (laughs) I wanted to change it. Oh, right. Well, you smashed it. You if absolutely smashed it. If you want to win it. the competition, you have to put your name in the hat. Nailed See, it. that's catchy. Absolutely. They're going to love that. marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you should. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so what? that's so that's our that's our little competition that we're going to be running, and and just go and add us up on YouTube anyway because it turns out getting to a thousand subscribers is really bloody hard work, so um, we'd 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 massively appreciate it. Yes, yeah, it would be it would be great to um to see our numbers grow there. Um, what else has been going on in your in your life? I mean, 
I I got the tw- I know we just talked about not having gear, but I did get the twenty four to one hundred five because I ordered that long before the yes, challenge started. That was caveated, yeah. So that's so that's cool. Okay. <laughs> but as we're no longer talking about gear, uh, Tom is going to leave it at that. So I it, mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's okay. You, it's the unicorn, isn't it? It's the it's the lens I always wanted. It's the it's the dream. It's the dream thing. It now means that I can do every single job on one lens. Mm. Has like, it fulfilled everything for you? Pretty much. I mean, okay. to the point where the, to the point where now I've like I really am kind of like done with gear because I'm like, does it get any better than mm. than Down what I, two what foot I, long lens? It's not two foot. Do you want to see? How, do you want to see how big it is? Uh, do you want me to get yeah. it out? <laughs> out of context, Tom. That I, I just just hope no one cuts this. This will be a terrible meme. As he grunts in the background for a sheer weight. <laughs> right. Here it is. Okay. That's so a seventy two hundred, isn't it? It's it it is the size of a seventy two hundred <laughs> and it's it's pretty massive and it weighs a lot. Yeah. You know, it's got every, its own arm. It does have its it does have its own arm, which actually is quite good. I quite yeah. like having like an arm. I've got I've obviously put a, put an Arca Swiss on it straight away. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, it's it's exactly what you know. It, that when you watch the reviews, people are like, "It's expensive, it's heavy, it's long." You go, "Yes, but it's super convenient." Like that. This is me zooming from twenty four to one hundred five. Ready? Watch the watch the front barrel. It doesn't move. <laughs> it's internal zoom, and that's a twenty four yeah. to one hundred five two eight. Mm. I'm like, cool. That's that's what I. That's the lens. I wanted from pretty much the earliest door, like earliest days of my photography career. That means I can now do literally everything on one lens, and I think it's going to be brilliant. Mm. But you know, it turns out that it's, uh, I'd, it'd be really interesting to see how many of them you see, how many of them you see in the wild, mm. right? Because when the London Camera Exchange rung me on the day it shipped, I they own. Thank you. They only had one. Well, this is I've started wearing my Apple Watch again, and it just picks up everything that I say. Um, the <laughs> speed dialed London Camera Exchange yeah, in Guildford. It, probably, ha- it, it <laughs> probably has. Call Martin. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's um, it's a, it's a lot, you know. Mm. The, but the, but the thing is, people who are uh, who are talking about the cost and the length and the weight. Yeah, it costs a lot. Yeah, it's heavy. And yes, it's long. But it doesn't matter when you're using it, when you're on a shoot and stuff, the f- the sheer fact that you aren't then having to break the camera down, swap the lens over. Yeah. That that can, on a fast-paced shoot, having to swing a lens can be actually, you can lose a whole vibe just by swapping a lens over. I know there are probably people going, oh, what are you talking about? Well, sometimes... You know as well as I do. I get less than a minute with people, mm. right? If you're then suddenly being like, "Oh, hold on, quickly! I reckon this will look good on a slightly longer lens." Run back to the camera bag, open it up, change the lens over, put the new lens back on, run back to them. That can be mm. twenty, thirty seconds, which yeah. actually is a percentage of, you know, you've ju- you've just spent five percent of your time with the person, you know, changing a lens. And it's actually, mm. I'm like, and I and I'd only ever if I ever went on the seventy two hundred, I'd only go up to kind of like the hundred and hundred and ten mark anyway. Like I'd yeah. never go very long on it. So for for me, that's going to just be ultra convenient. And obviously, as I'm super stacked and such a hunk, um, I can deal with the extra length and weight. So not that fast. <laughs> Do you want to heave it back onto the shelf now? Not really. Not really. I, I need. I need to take my energy supplements to get it back. To get it back. <laughs> no, but, but kudos to, Can- to kudos to Canon really for making the unicorn. The lens I never thought would exist now exists, and I own it, and I'm pumped. But London Camera Exchange rung me, and they were like, "Yeah, we've only got one in." Mm. And it's obviously wow. obviously yours, but they, we haven't ordered loads, and we haven't had loads of pre-orders for it. And I don't know if it's because maybe people who are buying that lens might not necessarily order it from London Camera Exchange or, throwing it out there, it might not be that popular. Mm. I don't know. Maybe people aren't spending money at the moment. It's hard to know, isn't it? Well, it's a, It's also, it's not It's not a cheap 
it's not a cheap lens. I think it was no. three and a half K. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, you're not talking. I mean, the, the trouble is with all this mirrorless stuff is that, do you remember when mirrorless first came out, people are like, it's so light and small. Yeah. The only light and small system is the Fuji stuff. Yeah. Everything else is monstrous. Absolutely massive compared well, to Sony all the other stuff. stuff. Is, Sony stuff isn't too bad. No, no that's true. Sony is one of those camera manufacturers that do have some fantastic uh, zoom lenses for their mirrorless setup as well, which do make me slightly envious. Well, the I mean, master sets are really lovely. They are. I mean, what what is really interesting is because the I don't again I should know this. The I don't quite know what has enabled this jump in optical quality. Obviously, the technology, um, you know, the lens making technology. But there is apparently something to do with the shorter flange distance on mm. mirrorless that enables them to do these different optical designs, which has enabled these incredible quality zooms. Like you just mentioned, the Sony's, the the Canon RF stuff, and the the Nikon Z and the um, the Sony stuff. I'm sure other brands are available, but the there's the zooms now. I don't know how much of an argument there is for quality of zooms versus primes. Remember when we were back on the EF days, if you wanted like the absolute quality, you would be shooting mm. on primes. Yeah. The zooms were for convenience and the primes were for quality. I don't think that's the case anymore. Like at no point have I ever looked at one of my shots from my R5 and, and the 24 to 70 and gone, oh, I just wish that was a bit sharper. If anything, I'm like, wow, I wish yeah, that was softer. Might be the case. I mean, the sharpness isn't so much, I guess it's more fall off is really where you you notice the difference in sure. in terms of your kind of i hate the term but the, your buka um <laughs> yeah, but, but no no but you are right like you don't you don't get a 24 to 105 1.4 yeah. because i mean let's face it that would be monstrous but the um you know that you do get if you're shooting wide open primes are obviously the way to go mm. um but i just i if you're not shooting wide open and if you're at kind of f8 or whatever I think you'd be really hard pushed now to to make an argument of primes versus zooms. Yes, yeah. they're, they're so good. They're so mm. good. Anyway, we're not talking about gear. No, um. no, no. no well, I'm kind of like it's, honestly, it's funny. I'm I'm kind of a bit bored of it. I'm sure the listeners are as well. So, <laughs> yeah, we um we, we'll have to figure out new things to talk about on our firesides. I mean, that would be one thing actually would be quite useful to hear from the audience on these things is actually what do you want to like say, what do you want to see? What do you want to see from um, Exposed Negative in 2024? Um, we have had some great um, requests for guests, some of which we're able to um, fulfill um, and some that we've got in the pipeline that I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. Um but we're always open to suggestions of what you actually find interesting. I mean, it's going to vary, isn't it? There's going to be people that say, oh, I love the bag chat or I love the gear chat. And there's going to be other people like you could bore off with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can't please so, everyone all the time. Exactly. But um, it is good to get some feedback in terms of what's working for people and what people want to hear about more. Um, yeah. And so give us some ideas. I mean, I'm suffering today because I have not had a coffee. Uh, and I like to think that I don't need to have coffees, but I've come to realise that on the sleep deprivation I'm currently experiencing and coffee, not having a coffee. It's helpful. It's helpful. It's helpful, it, but it it also it's helpful from like a psychological point of view, isn't it? Because it's not just, it's not, it's like uh, my... Um, uh, tea just can't... doesn't cut it. No. I don't, a tea's a bit dull. I know that's going to be I, a ve I drink, very I, unpopular I drink... view. See, I'm known in my studio for not drinking tea because um, whenever anyone suggests a cup of tea, I'm always like, no, I'm fine. And then they complain because I never make the tea. But I'm like, but I don't drink it. <laughs> but then at home... I probably have three cups a day. It's really weird. I don't know. Maybe it's the extra 10 metres in the studio that I have to walk or the fact that the kitchen is slightly less convenient. I just don't drink much tea in the studio. I just don't but drink I, much tea full stop. I just, I, I don't know. It's fine. It, <laughs> Yorkshire tea, man. It's You can't beat it. Hey, don't get me wrong. If you're going to have a tea, Yorkshire tea is the one. 
but it's uh, it's the real one. But like for, for it me, powers Britain. It, it powers Britain. And that, my friends, is advertising at work. <laughs> so, if Yorkshire Tea want to sponsor the podcast, hey, I'd be I'd be super down for that. Uh, if <laughs> if they're listening, I drink more tea than anyone on the planet. To be fair, I think one of the most successful YouTubers on the planet, Colin Firth, has already nailed the Yorkshire Tea sponsorship. Uh, yeah. Thing. Love I, Colin. I don't think I don't Love think Colin's they're going to be looking to sponsor our pod, No, podcast. fair enough. Fair enough. Well, bless, bless But we you know Yorkshire Tea powers photographers. There's a good like. Uh, there's a good um, line to be had with that. Do you know Just what though? Maybe maybe that is an interesting thing. So so I am trying to. We're on the road a lot, right? And it's very easy to pick up a fizzy drink or an energy drink or a Red Bull or a. a See, Monster, I never. I never. I never drink fizzy drinks. No, I mean I so, say never, but I so rarely have a fizzy drink. I'm I'm off them now, but mm. I I I never really drunk the Rockstar, the the Red Bull, that kind of energy drink. But I would have mm. like a Fanta or a Lilt or like a Seven Up or something like that. But then uh, someone was just like, "You should just try drinking water." I feel infinitely better now for just. I go through about four liters of water a day. That's probably not true. Probably more like two liters, but still, uh, still a decent amount of water, and um, I feel much better as a result. But I, I don't. I see. It's funny that considering your body is eighty percent water. Well, who, I wonder why you feel better. Know? But there, but there are some people that I've seen on sets whose body must be eighty percent Red Bull. Yes, yes. And I'm I mean, like, I used to I used to work for uh, Red Bull, and um, I remember being on a shoot in in Belarus. And uh, the talent that we were there to mm-hmm. photograph was like a cover shoot. She turned up three and a half hours late. And by the time she turned up, I mean, this is going back 10, 10 years or so. Mm-hmm. I think I had consumed three or four cans of Red Bull because they had one of those giant Red Bull kind of wheelie bins full of the stuff. Right. And you're just pacing around the studio waiting for this person to turn up. I was so wired. <laughs> I was just, I was just chatting absolute gibberish, this and is... I felt awful. Like you know, there's, um, there's a lot to be said for, you know, for energy drinks. I think there, there's a time and a place for them, and I <laughs> would resort to them at a last, you know, a last resort. But it's not something I'm gonna spend my time. Do you know uh, what though? Interesting tip for you: if you're driving late at night, apparently, driving, uh, having chugged a Red Bull is much, much worse for you. So driving wired is worse than driving tired. So well, There we go. There's another advertising slogan There, we, there we go, right? No, but if, you, if you're tired, you're actually better off to just neck a really big bottle of water, and that'll wake you up more. Yeah, because you'll than, need a wee the whole way. <laughs> exactly. And then stick your, stick your head out the car window and scream really loudly, and that'll wake you, <laughs> that'll wake you up no end at all. <laughs> Well, so. the Tom Barnes school of staying awake at night driving. If you ever see a man <laughs> going down the motorway screaming out of his window that he needs a wee, yeah. you know who it is. That that has been me on, on one or two occasions in the past. <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you want to know a really interesting story about Ribble, though? Okay, go so, on. Red not going to get sued, is it? I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> Ribble, uh, uh, when they first became a... Uh, brand and a product they Mm. filled loads of bins with empty crushed red bull cans but like completely filled them so anytime anyone went to a bin people were like what is this drink and then people started buying it because they were like what why are people drinking so much of this stuff and that (laughs) is how red bull started wow that's quite clever it's very clever right i like i've always liked that what's the one that all the kids drink at the moment is it prime Prime, yeah, that's uh, so is that an energy that, drink. It is some. I think some of them are an energy drink. Some of them got like a really high level of caffeine in. Some of them haven't got any caffeine in. I think, but it's, think um, it's run run by the YouTuber Logan Paul and my uh, the guy I photographed ages ago, KSI, who's right, now yeah. who's now a semi professional boxer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, but they, but they did uh, an absolutely amazing job with their marketing. It became, well, I mean, it became, they had quite a big captive audience there already. <laughs> There's a lesson did, to be learned there. They did, but they managed to create the 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 best supply and demand 
thing. You know, you the kids were paying 30 quid, 40 quid a bottle for this yeah. stuff at one point and they were going you know they were going round it was honestly unbel unbelievable hype so when so, we, so once we've grown our youtuber audience through this competition mm -hmm. we're gonna set up um pink cow our energy drink um yeah but i thought we weren't going to discuss that on the air <laughs> oh. i thought we were gonna greg <laughs> sorry th listen listen i've just told you some great stories about how brands <laughs> kept it really quiet <laughs> But yeah, anyway, so Pink Cow's coming. <laughs> yeah, look out for it. <laughs> heard it here first. Oh, heard it here. Yeah. Oh, Greg, very good. Might not have had my coffee, but I'm still on it. You wait, guys. We're going to move a lot of units. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right. So, first episode in of the new year. It's going well. We've already ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're just going to have, have a bit more fun with it this year, aren't we? Yeah. Try to. I think so. I mean, we'll have a go. We'll, what, we'll, um, we'll give it a good push. What are your, um, seeing as we're on our New Year episode, have you got any resolutions this year? Yes. Uh, 10, 24 by 7, 6, 8, uh, 4K oh, and 2.5K. Oh. Well, hey, boom, boom. Um, no, my... Photography jokes. <laughs> um, have I got any New Year's resolutions? Yes. What about you? Uh... Consciously not, um, but Sub subconsciously, I, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I'm not very good at like, I'm not very good at uh, sitting down and having that conversation. You need to sit down with somebody else and be like, be held to account for your resolutions. And I just didn't have that conversation this year. Right, With let's too, much, do, too let's, much other stuff going. Let's on. do it. Let's have that conversation. Right. Um, <laughs> how do I get out of this one? You uh, can't, my friend. You are. You have walked into that. You. You must have known I was going to hold you to account on that. Surely. Well, I haven't really given it any thought. So tell me yours first. Okay. <laughs> my major one is yeah. that I'm going to try and relax and be way kinder to myself. Okay. And I'm going to get a real balance between life and work, mm -hmm. because actually we work to live not the other way around i love my job don't get me wrong like i love my job it's the best job in the world as i'm sure most people listening are going yeah do you know what he's absolutely right i do have the best job in the world we are very fortunate as photographers to have one of the coolest best most exciting most interesting most lovable and just most interesting careers on the planet we are just that lucky but mm. it can come at a, a, a quite a high price of working all the time and you know always being busy and not maybe you know making sure there's always attention at other places so mm. i don't know if i told you there's actually a listener on the show um i think i'm gonna i'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say his name because i'm fairly certain i'm gonna cock it up i think his name was steve steve if i have got your name wrong i can only apologize but here, listen to this, because what our conversation we had in a cold car park has stuck with me and changed my life forever. Now, let me, exp let me explain why. So, I last year, I sold mm -hmm. lots of equipment on eBay, right? Not unusual for me. I've done it plenty of times in the past. But I sold a boom to this nice chap. Again, I'm fairly certain he was called Steve. And I'd, I'd sold a lot of stuff and I'd had a lot of chats with people in this car park. I don't meet people at the house. I, I meet people in a car park because obviously, you know, security and all that. So Steve had turned up, he'd bought a boom from me and, mm. um, and randomly he was like, oh, hey Tom, love the show. And I was like, oh, uh, well done for figuring out who I am through eBay. I have no idea how you've managed that, but congrats. And then he just randomly just goes into it, uh, this, this, I can't remember how we got onto it. It might have been random. In my head, I remember it being random, but I was very tired. Mm -hmm. And I'd had one of those mornings where, like, I think we'd had maybe a bit of an argument in the house, like everyone was in a bad mood, no one had slept well, like that kind of vibe. And he, when picking up this boom, he was like, oh, should we go for a coffee? And I was like, oh, man, listen, I, I really wouldn't want to go for a coffee, but I've got to get back. Um, and we got chatting and we then ended up standing outside in the cold for about 40 minutes. But he had said, um, as part of the conversation, he was like, you know, with photography and jobs in general, you've just got to remember what you want on your headstone. And I was like, what? 
what do you mean what I want on my headstone? He goes, look, do you want to be the world's best dad, handy with a camera, or world's most amazing photographer, vacant dad? Mm. And I was like, right, fair. That is actually, yeah. and it hit me, honestly, I don't know why, but like maybe it was just my mindset, but it hit me like a ton of bricks. So Steve, if you're listening, and I hope you are, just to let you know that I'm forever thankful for that conversation we had in the in the cold car park. I will, I will, I don't know why, but it, it flicked a switch for me that day. Um, and so- We're going to get a message and it'll just say, it was Brian and yeah, right. you're welcome. And it wasn't a boom, it was a set of chairs. Um <laughs> But the, um, you know, there's, there's, there's conversations you have with people through life. And that, that's one of my, my uh, big New Year's resolutions is, yes, work's important. Yes, work is, is, um, is you know, it can be commandeering. But for, for me, really want to make sure that I am a person first and a photographer second. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. have a really, really good life balance. Um, and part of the gear challenge, you know, not buying any kit means that less money's going out which means yeah. i don't have to work as hard to be covering this insane equipment cost so yeah. actually it kind of balances out in a nice way yeah um kind of um coupled to that one of my new year's resolutions is to be better with time management because okay. now with two kids i have less mm. time so the time that i am now at work i am at work like yeah. I am properly at work. I am sat down, headphones on. You cannot get me out of this zone. I am absolutely sending out as many emails as I can, messaging people straight back, scheduling for Instagram, doing emails. You know, I am I am absolutely on it now as far as work goes because when you have one kid, you have less time. And then when you have two kids, seemingly you have very little time. I can't imagine mm -hmm. what it's like for people who've got more than two kids. Probably, you know they've got less time who knew <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's it's for me being really good with my time is going to be uh, a big thing uh, and also one of my other things is um less coveting things mm -hmm. you know don't tie myself to my possessions you know yes this is a nice thing to have but i've been doing my job for 20 something years without it yeah. So it's not as if it's going to be, it's not as if this lens, you know, the 24 to 105, it's not as if it's going to change everything. Will it make my life slightly more convenient? Yes. And that's why I've bought it, but I'm not going to be buying. I'm going to try and do the whole year. Like I'm, I'm not going to officially extend this thing, but I am really <laughs> going to, I am really going to try and see if I can go the whole year without really buying any mass capital goods and one of the yeah. reasons i can't obviously give financial advice out on the podcast because i'm fairly certain there's laws um kind of against that but yeah and your asbo and my asbo of course i forget about that um but there's there's other ways of reducing your tax bill rather than buying equipment and there are other ways of reducing your tax bill by planning for your future and mm -hmm. being and being kind of um financially responsible <laughs> god the boring stuff man it's but it, but you know it, but, but if somebody if somebody had come to me uh in my early 20s and was like hey man you should be putting a little aside every month and you know putting it into either a pension or investments and stuff like that i'd be like why and then someone could have explained about compound interest and how the markets work and stuff like that and i'd be like oh so you're telling me if i put it in when i'm in my early 20s it could be worth much much more by the time i'm 45 and i'd be like well it could be worth much much more or it could be much worth worth less you know but yeah. the chances are if you look at overall market trends the chances are it would have gone up so there are but the thing is if someone had given you that advice at that age you probably wouldn't have taken it anyway because you'd be like okay cool but i still want that lens <laughs> or i still want this thing yeah and i mean the i think it's you know it's not until you get older that you start to uh you, you know also you forget how little or whatever money you had at that age to be able to kind of put it aside mm -hmm. alongside everything else you know and you also need to do at that stage you need to invest in your career more so than you do 
when you're a bit older, like especially when you're starting out, because actually you have quite a bit of kit to buy. That's true. Just to get started, to that's set stuff up. So yeah, it's, I guess that's different coming from like an almost forty year old bloke who's surrounded by the best kit in the world. It's very easy for me to be like, oh, you should be doing this. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I totally get, I totally get that. I just wish that somebody had told me twenty something years ago to actually maybe start planning for the future a little bit because even if you do a little bit it will just add up yeah and i I think that's the thing that i really wish i'd been kind of told earlier on but that's that's again one of my you know yearly my new year's resolutions is to be just a bit more sensible with everything Mm. like I, i heard this great quote from the army if you can't be good be careful and i was like i like that i like that a lot so so now you know, when I'm not being good, I'm going to be careful. So with with the money and stuff, yeah, I maybe I want that lens. But actually, I reckon that lens isn't the best way of me investing that money. What's it actually going to do for me? What's it actually going to do? And would that money be better off putting my pension instead? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so... It's less, it's less fun, though. Yeah. So I guess in terms of my resolutions, I would say that um, I'm looking to do more personal work this year Mm -hmm. and more work that I actually want to shoot. So actively going out and and experimenting and playing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't do that enough and I haven't been able to do that really last year with... Um, just my schedule. I just it was difficult mm-hmm. timing wise, but this year hopefully things will get a little bit easier. Um, and I think that's kind of the main one is just just trying to find a way back through to kind of feeling inspired and creative again because it's very easy to lose that when you're kind of chasing the work. And without one, you don't get the other. And if you don't mm-hmm. nurture that create creative kind of drive and that inspiration inspiration it's it starts to fade um and to that end one thing that's happened is we've got one of the guys i share a studio with has um built a color dark room in this in our studios and um i'm really excited to basically learn color printing I'm not going to go fully into it i don't think but i definitely want to give it a shot and have a go and maybe go back through some of my old work um and and you know print up do some nice hand prints of kind of archives that have been sat in my negative uh, sorry negatives that's been sat in my archives for mm. like the past decade um because for me that initial spark of creativity and enjoyment with photography came from being in the dark room mm-hmm. and i think that actually revisiting that and kind of sensing and experiencing that magic again is going to be really powerful and really important um in kind of driving me forward and and also you know i've never had the discipline to just shoot assignments on film and i'd love to have a go at doing that um really you know if the right assignment came up yeah it's got to be the right assignment it would probably be an editorial rather than a commercial job sure but um you know there's something really interesting about limiting yourself by shooting film you know you shoot so much less obviously Mm -hmm. you you put more um thought into the actual process and you put more thought into the outcome as well you know when you're looking at images and you've got a few to choose from the actual decision making becomes a lot easier i Mm -hmm. found and i think that there's just something visceral about shooting and developing and hand printing that is really difficult to explain or to put a finger on as to what exactly it is, but there's something in that that's kind of this tangible thing that is missing, and I felt has been missing for a long time with mm-hmm. digital photography. So, yeah, um, I'm. I guess one of my resolutions is just to explore that avenue, because, like you said, you you know you need to be. It's easy to kind of get lost in chasing the jobs and and trying to kind of just pay the bills and totally understandable as to why people do that and it's totally necessary and it's a sensible thing to do but you've also got to make sure you're nurturing your creativity Mm -hmm. and and nurturing that kind of that fascination that love that first got you into photography as a medium and for me that said that was in the dark room so i kind of want to go back and explore that and i also want to then 
start exploring scrapbooking again because for me that was a huge part of my kind of journey into photography was scrapbooking keeping journals Mm -hmm. you know that physicality of working with printed images and working with media that's actually physical rather than digital um was a really important kind of creative process and i've just kind of let that fall by the wayside because it's just not it does it's hard to justify it sometimes you're like well this feels like a kind of exercise that they do in my kids nursery while i'm at home as a grown man doing it but actually you know you can get you know some of my favorite photographers are prolific prolific scrapbookers Mm -hmm. you know you look at somebody like frank ockenfels and he's he's uh he's got some amazing published um books of his his scrapbook volumes over the years you know somebody like peter beard you look at his scrapbooks they're, they're um there's some great examples of good scrapbooking mm. and i think uh i also think that kind of that maybe that there's a there's an interest in that again uh with the younger generations anyway because of the way that digital has kind of taken the soul out of it and people are constantly with photography trying to figure out how they make it feel mm. you know oh, again and the more and more digital it becomes and the more and more that we start to see AI creeping into things and kind of taking, sucking the soul out of everything, I feel like people are going to be trying to search again for what actually feels a little bit more meaningful. Mm-hmm. Do you know what's but funny, yeah. though? I think the more we're getting exposed to AI um, content and imagery, I feel mm. like we're becoming more and more wise to it. So I, I got a message on LinkedIn and I was mm. like... I just replied saying, yeah, chat GPT is clearly not working for you. And I was just like, it's the most, it's the most obviously chat GPT written bit of text I'd ever received. And then I kind of was reading through a blog article. I got about two lines in and I was like, this has been generated. Like it doesn't, it Mm. just, there's something about it. It just doesn't kind of flow how a human would write. Um, and yeah, for me, it's, I don't know. It's really, it's really, really interesting. I'm using, it will be really interesting actually though, by the end of this year, to kind of talk about this again on the pod and see how far yeah. it's developed in a year because yeah. you know we'll see how far it, it came last year exactly so, exactly no i i completely agree but i mean the the thing is talking about ai yes it's it's bad as far as kind of like image generation and stuff like that goes and obviously let's not get into image usage and the the rights that they've scraped or they're not the rights they've scraped the images that have been scraped through the internet but the there are ways that are you people are able to use it to mm. you know get through things like i now have a um writing has always been my my least favorite part of any sort of process i'm 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 quite a good verbal storyteller <laughs> listeners to the podcast might disagree but i i i do like telling a story um but i cannot translate it from here and here to on paper i cannot get it out of my head or my mouth in the same way via writing it down i just can't Mm. so now what i've started doing is i have started doing um i've started doing long bits of uh dictation and i'm creating voice notes that then get uh, transcribed into text using ai in using ai and then i run them through an engine say please correct the grammar and, and voila so that's that's my voice and the way i talk but with corrected grammar and taking out the pauses and stuttering and stuff like that. Um, and it's working It's working really well. It means that I'm now able to produce content that sounds exactly how I've said it. And mm. it's not using any generative stuff. It's using AI to correct it and, you know, change the, you know, the punctuation in it and things like that. And it's working mm. really well for me in that side of things. And then, for example, in Capture, I don't know if you've downloaded the latest version of Capture One with the AI masking and the AI selection tools. They are absolutely phenomenal and they mm. have changed a ton of stuff with my workflow, which means I very rarely now dip into Photoshop. I'm doing ma- the majority of everything now in Capture One. And mm. it's it's amazing. Their, their AI masking tool you're able now to just hover over the face and select just the skin or you're able to select individual items and it's yeah yeah it's they've done an absolutely stellar job on that so they they I'm trying to be more positive about various things of AI because there are a lot of benefits to us if we're able to incorporate it into the back end of the business 
Um, but yes, I mean, in general, the image creation stuff does frighten the, the jeepers out of me. <laughs> oh, by the way, one of my, my, one of my New Year's resolutions, I'm trying to swear less. I'm trying not to swear at all. So oh, you, mi- good. you might notice that I suddenly sound very, very wholesome as a result. Hence me saying jeepers <laughs> and things, stuff like that. Yes. But, all right, Ned Flanders. Well, quite. Diddly, diddly, diddly. So, um, you know, I'm trying to be... I realised that I was around some friends at Christmas and I was like, wow, we all swear a lot. Like, mm. ab- actual, like, I was like, oh, wow, this actually doesn't sound, doesn't sound great. So I'm trying now not to, to swear at all, which is surprisingly hard. Cl- <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's a classic Tom uh, kind of approach. I'm just going to do it in absolute. But I am, I am, <laughs> I am giving it a go. So it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. Well, so, I am happy to call you out on it. Um, thanks. <laughs> when you do, and I feel like you should uh, you should call me out on it because we should probably make our podcast family friendly. Well, so we're exa- have to come up with some you know alternatives. Exactly. Uh, but maybe I think they should be photographic related. We could come up with like the photographer's curse dictionary. Well, like oh lens gap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, flange distance. Yeah. Um, yeah, less less so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shatter. Okay, well, yeah. Oh, shatter. That's yeah, there, good. We, yeah, there we go. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, F stop. F stop. Good. Yep. Thanks. And that's all my knowledge of camera stuff gone, guys. So, <laughs> but listen, I tell you what, I, w- I am actually going to hold you to account. Uh, and this is this is going to be very complimentary. When I see your personal work, it's very inspiring. I love watching your personal work uh, or, or looking at oh, your personal you. work. It's really, really very good. You're a very talented photographer. So when I see it, I get inspired myself. And I'm like, like the the series you did of the lady uh, in the workshop with the bu- motorbike. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thought, I honestly thought that was one of the most beautiful photographs I'd ever seen. And I was just like, I love that. I think that's uh, actually amazing. So I am going to hold you to account because I would love to see more of your personal work. Oh, thank you. Well, yes. Um, I think that's, you know, the same for a lot of people out there who are going to be kind of trying to do these things. It's quite difficult as photographers to find people to hold you to account, actually, sometimes. Mm. And that's the difficult thing with resolutions because you do need somebody to remind you and keep you in check. So, um, yes. You with your no swearing and me with my um, scrapbooking will will make 2024 the year of creativity. It does It does sound like we are going to Bible school, though, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. We're going to start scrapbooking and no swearing, guys. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, dear. Right. I, I think we should probably should bring this to a close because we've waffled on for, for far too long. We should. Well, listen, can, can I just say mm-hmm. 2023 was a bit of a weird year. Here yes. is wishing you and the listeners all the very best for a happy, prosperous, and healthy 2024. Here, here. Yes. And we have got a lot of good things lined up for you, so do come back and um, keep tuning in. And as we said earlier in the show, uh, make sure you pop along to YouTube and subscribe to be in with a chance to win one of the six licenses that we have for Capture One which is a six-month license, right? Correct. Um, that's That would definitely be worthwhile winning. So um, pop along to YouTube and hit the subscribe button. And in the meantime, look after yourselves and each other. Thank you very much for listening to the latest episode of the Exposed Negative podcast. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that by heading to our Patreon or doing one-offs. Uh, the details are on the website and the Patreon is patreon.com forward slash exposed negative. We'd love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash at exposed negative. And obviously we're on Instagram, which is X negative. If you want to follow us personally, mine is tombarnes.com on Instagram. As, as and the website <laughs> and then Greg's is at Greg Fennell and that's F-U-N-N-E-L-L so uh, yeah thank you very much for taking the time to listen and uh, hopefully you enjoy the next one <laughs>